Hey, this is Dave Pryor for Projects at Work here at Agile 2014, and I'm very happy to have Ken Rubin with me today. Thank you for taking time to come by and Thanks talk. Thanks for having me. So you are here at the conference to give two different sessions, yes. right? And one is about risk. Yes, it is. So what's the main focus for you in risk and Agile right now? Yeah, th I appreciate you asking, because this to me, uh, especially over the past year, has been a very important topic. And uh, here's the fundamental premise. Uh, I, I go online, I, I hear other people talk about risk, and what I see is a lot of heavyweight risk management machinery. Okay. All right. And so my first thought is, that doesn't feel very Agile-like. Okay. So what do you, can you give an example first of what you mean Sure. Right? So machinery. trying to repurpose traditional uh, full, formal risk identification, okay. qualification, quantification, sure. planning, the control. PMI, Standard, focus. nothing wrong with that model, by the way. Right. But in Agile, we tend to do things more in a lighter weight fashion. Mm -hmm. So my first observation was, I think people are trying to bring forward more traditional techniques mm -hmm. when they should bring some of that forward but maybe not all the machinery. Okay. And here's the fundamental premise. Uh, and the title of my presentation is Agile is Risk Management. Okay. The point being that if you properly apply Agile principles at a fundamental level, right. you will either make yourself robust to the uncertainty in an environment or at times anti-fragile right, okay. to doing that. So. This is a key thing for me because if you do Agile well, right. you eliminate a lot of the risks that we would have seen on other projects and so therefore reducing the amount of machinery you might need to deal with it. Okay. I'm not saying we're going to eliminate it. There's still some standard risk management techniques I want to use. Right. When a program, I'm happy to give examples, but yeah, the, the fundamental premise is really that. Great. So, uh, for example, if I, um, we outsource a component to be constructed by a sub-vendor. So okay. we, have a, we have a vendor, they're building a component on our behalf. So there's a, the uncertain event is that the, the vendor will fail to deliver the component on right. the date they specified. All right. Now, you say, well, we should, how do we handle that in an Agile environment? Right. Well, the, the, the obvious things we could do for that is, well, first question you would ask is, what do you think the probability is that the vendor won't deliver? Right. Chances are it's a probability distribution, but some people say like 50%. Sure. It might be 50% on the day they promise, but three months after that, it's probably not a 50% probability. It's probably like a 5% probability okay. on doing that. But we'll stick with the single number for a moment, say 50%. Sure. So what do you want to do about that? Well, option one might be, how about we send some of our people to the vendor mm -hmm. to work with them, and maybe that'll help expedite the component up. Okay. Well, I don't handle that in a traditional Agile-like way. It doesn't cause a new item to be put in my product backlog. Right. It doesn't cause me to reorder necessarily what I'm going to do in my backlog, but it may require me to put out a, a table. On the table, I list the risk, the probability that it might occur, and my specific mitigation action is to have Sarah go work over with there. that company. Okay. So here I'm re repurposing standard risk management machinery okay. because it was the right thing to do. Yeah. You know, the other alternative might be well, maybe we should do the parallel hedge. Let's start building the component ourselves. I sure. know we're paying the vendor, but if you think of what the cost of delay is, if right. we don't get the component, we can't ship our product, and if we can't ship our product, we lose a million a month. Yeah. So maybe we do and now use standard risk uh, agile machinery. We okay. put product backlog items in our product backlog mm -hmm. to build the component. Okay. By the way, first one who gets to the goal line wins. Okay. If the vendor finishes first, we'll use their component if we finish first, but I can't run the risk of not having the component. Okay. So in that example, I showed where standard risk machinery, you know, I have to have this table of identified risks, yep. right? And I specify probabilities and who's going to do what makes sense. In the other case, I can use things like standard product backlog grooming, okay. which is a principal technique in right. Agile for managing risk. Okay. It's a factor in how I prioritize. So one of the things I've done with risk management on Agile projects, I still do a lot of traditional stuff, and part of it is just to have my head around what might go wrong. Yes. Like they won't deliver whatever. But do you think there's value in some of those practices being included just to give the executives or whoever it is a place to come and dump their fear? So... Or is there I, a better Agile way to, to deal with that? No, I, I do want to identify important risks up front because I, I think we all agree to the idea that you should attack the high risk before they attack you. Okay. I don't care if you're doing Agile or whatever, sure. right? That, that's probably a good strategy. So here's the issue, though. In more traditional risk management, the assumption is early on you're going to generate sort of this risk assessment. Yeah. You're doing this now on the first day when you have the worst possible knowledge you're right. ever going to have about and the project. And then nobody updates it. So it made an assumption <laughs> yeah. that first you could do that. I have no doubt we can do some of that. Right. 
our ability, just like requirements. I have no doubt we can write some of the requirements on the first day, maybe not all of it. Yeah. So I don't want to ignore that, but when senior management looks at it, I want them to say, yeah, I want to give you comfort, and the domain that we're in will matter. Okay. If I'm building pacemakers, then our focus on risk management is going to be a little bit higher yeah. than when I go work on my comparative agility website. Okay. And it probably should be, but it has to also be practical. Just okay. because I, I work in a truly mission-critical, life-threatening domain, right. build the pacemaker incorrectly, people die, right? Unacceptable. It, 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 that doesn't still improve my ability to guess everything up front. Sure. Right? Sure. I just want to make sure I'm very careful and very focused about my risk. I think okay. you should be that way anyway. I'll simply acknowledge that in certain domains, we're likely to spend more time on it than others. Right. You know, in a pacemaker domain, we'll probably think more about risk than we do in a website we're building. Not that we should have, right? I mean, if my website goes down and I lose a million dollars a minute on Black Friday, yeah. that's yeah. a risk I don't want to deal with, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? So just because it's a website doesn't mean it's low risk. Right. But it, I, I acknowledge the fact that certain domains, like putting a $2.7 billion rover up on Mars, okay. uh, you don't have a lot of second chances on this one. And, and the risk, I mean, if you do have something like a traditional risk register, that is sort of like a product backlog of risk. It is. And in the, what you'll see is some people will take standard techniques that were based on that. Like, let's have a risk point burn down chart. Yes. yes. Or, and do things like that. I'm, I'm not adverse to any of that. If I think if it's helpful, I'm going to use it. Right. I'm just saying that I think most of these, see, this is the simple part of the discussion. Yeah. I will use simple risk management techniques when it's appropriate to do so. Okay. My real argument and the real thesis that I'm offering up is that if you do Agile the right way. You don't need as much of the other. You're going to eliminate a lot of yeah. the risks by how you do Agile. Okay. And so the concept I'm really trying to pull out is the distinction. Uh, this is borrowed from a book called Anti-Fragile okay. by uh, Nassim Taleb. Okay. And in his book, he, he defines fragile. Yep. You know, fragile is, you know, I put a glass vase on the table and I bump the table and the yeah. vase falls off. It's fragile. It's going to break. Right. So it doesn't, a glass vase doesn't like disorder. It would rather me put it in the china closet. Where it's safe. And never touch it. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I could put this plastic cup here, bump the table. If it falls on the floor, Whatever. it's not going to break. Cup, right. So... So if you ask most people, what's the opposite of fragile? Right. They would probably say robust, okay. resilient. But that's not the opposite of fragile. The cup is robust, no robust doubt. Robust enough to fall off the table. Right. If survive. I dropped it from an airplane, maybe not as robust anymore. So within certain limits, it's yeah. robust. But so here, here's the big point. In his book, he defines the opposite of fragile to be anti-fragile. Okay. So if things that are fragile are harmed by disorder... Sure. Things that are anti-fragile benefit from disorder. The cup okay. didn't benefit by being dropped on the floor. It just right. wasn't harmed by being dropped sure. on the floor. So my, th my thesis was if you apply Agile correctly, it right. will make you at times robust to uncertainty in your environment and okay. it also at times anti-fragile, meaning what if you could actually get better right. in the presence of uncertainty? So if okay. risk management was viewed as the act of re eliminating risk, yeah. what if I told you that certain risk you actually benefit from, are you sure you want to eliminate that? Yeah. Or do, would you rather exploit that? Okay. So what I'm saying is in, in an agile environment, certain risks we don't benefit from, but I want to be resilient to. Okay. Other risks we just, I'll give you an example, just yes, to make this be very clear. Uh, I think everybody gets the idea of robustness. Let's mm -hmm. talk anti-fragility. In an anti-fragile environment, uh, I'm going to argue fast feedback makes you anti-fragile. Okay. So... I learn quickly from customers. I get feedback fast from customers. Yep. If I get feedback quickly, it could indicate that I'm going down the wrong path, which okay. would allow me to prune the bad path quickly. And reduce your risk. It reduces my risk and increases in the benefit that I might actually build the right product. Okay. If I run down that path too far, I probably deliver something nobody wanted. So my point is, you don't know what the feedback is going to be. Right. There's uncertainty and randomness in the feedback, but you can actually benefit from that feedback, well, so you're anti-fragile. And the way that you just said it got me thinking because it's you, we, there's risk you want to get rid of, yes. right? But there's also risk that opens it an opportunity. Correct. Right? So if you think about it, your goal is to maximize expected monetary value. Okay. In, in traditional, let me make that sound simpler. In traditional risk management, you would multiply the probability of occurrence right. by the consequences. Mm -hmm. If it's a $500,000 impact, if it happens and it's a 50% probability it could happen, the outcome of that is likely a loss of $250,000. Sure. 
So your goal is to maximize that, the economic value of that. So that means minimize losses yep. and exploit benefits. Okay. I mean, think about stock options for a moment. Yep. Stock options are anti-fragile because okay. you have minimum downside yeah. and you have unlimited upside. Okay. Meaning you can only lose the amount of money you ex in your exercise price to get the stock options. Right. But if it goes up, for every dollar it goes up, you're a dollar more in the money. Yeah. So in an environment like that, you like volatility in the stock price okay. because the, the likely outcome is if it goes volatile in the negative direction, you bound a downside. Right. If it goes really volatile in the positive direction, you raise your you're a millionaire. Right. So anti-fragile, simply stated, anti-fragile is when you benefit more from randomness than you're harmed by it. Okay. And what I'm saying is by applying core agile principles, you frequently can be in a position of actually benefiting from the randomness. And if that's true, your goal is not to eliminate it, exploit your goal is to exploit it. it. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Awesome. All right. So you, when is this talk? This will be Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. Okay. Tomorrow morning is it full yet? Uh, as far as I can tell. Okay. So you're going to have to get in line. And then you're also doing another session. I am. Oh, one quick note. They are sure. going to videotape. Oh, We're going to video great. our video record tomorrow's session. So if you can't make okay. it in the room. So watch the video. And the we video. will come back and post a link. Now, the other session, just real quick, that's a different type of session. The other session is what's called Stalwarts. Okay. It, which is sort of a unique thing that happens at the Agile Conference. They invite a, a handful of people. Uh, typically some people who done something or wrote a book or... Rock stars. Uh, yeah. I don't know that I'm a rock, rock star, star, but I got, they were kind enough to invite me. <laughs> I sit up on stage, uh, they bring couches and chairs up, and literally people submit questions, and it's like this, it's a discussion. Yeah. People come up, we sit down, we chat about it, and then the next person comes up. So it's really an opportunity for people who want to have a discussion and maybe get some insight into what the issue is they're dealing with okay. and how other companies might have dealt with it. Cool. And it's Thursday. Yeah, all right, Thursday. So what time Thursday? You know? I believe that is the 1045 session. Okay. And I'll put, I'll put links up to that as well. Great. Thanks a lot for coming. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's great Thank talking you. again.